Good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning to all the girls. Hello. Hi, girls. Good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning to all the boys. Hello. Hi, boys. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning to all you wiggle worms. Hello. I'm so glad that you're all my friends. You bring me joy that never ends. I'm so happy to be your friend. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Hi, guys. How's it going? Good morning, Keys family. Hi, Asher. Hi, B. I'm glad you guys are able to watch today. I'm so excited to be with my friends. I'm really glad. Hi, Piper, Riker, Lily, Mason. Hi, guys. I'll try to say hi as I see your names pop up. If I don't, just know that I'm thinking of you. I'm really excited today. I picked some of my favorite stories to share with you guys, and I think you're really going to love them. Good morning, Layton. Hello. How are you? Good morning. I'm so glad to see you here today. I hope you guys are going to really like my stories today. I think that you will. All right. So um, I want to get started first by saying again, thank you to all the author illustrators who have given us permission to use their music um, or to use their stories, I mean, for our live story times. And then also the music that I use every week is Songs for Wiggle Worms. It is an album by Old Town School of Folk Music, and it's one of my favorites to use for story time. Um, the kids often will request some of the songs at home I've heard from parents. So if you have Amazon, you can access that music too. Hi, Piper, Ryder, and Raylan. I'm so glad you guys are watching. My throat's just a little bit dry this morning. I don't know about you guys, but I've had lots of sniffles and sneezes from my allergies. That tells me that spring is coming, even though it's been cold. And then I have to tell you, I have a theory that I got from Miss Linda at the library. Hi, Miss Linda, if you're watching. Miss Linda says that right before the warm weather comes, we always have a spell of cold weather, and it's called the blackberry snap. So I don't know if this was our blackberry snap. Miss Linda might say it's a little bit too early, but your your grandpas and, and meemaws, your poppies and, and nanas, they might know, especially if they're old country folks. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with one of our first stories. Wolfie the Bunny. I love this one. Lots of my friends have heard me read this story before, so I hope you guys like it. Wolfie the Bunny is written and illustrated by Amy, or it's written by Amy Dykeman and illustrated by Zachariah O'Hora. Alright, let's get this here. That's Wolfie. And that, well, we'll get to that. Alright, Wolfie the Bunny. The bunny family came home to find a bundle outside their door. The bundle looks to be a basket, something furry. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. They peeked. They gasped. It was a baby wolf. He's adorable, said Mama. He's ours, said Papa. He's going to eat us all up, said Dot. But Mama and Papa were too smitten to listen. Uh-oh. Dot looks worried. I don't know, if I was a bunny and a wolf showed up at my door, I might be a little concerned. Wolfie slept through the night. Dot did not. Oh my. 
She looks like she's keeping a close eye on him, doesn't she? I don't know if I blame her. Mama served carrots for breakfast. He likes them, said Mama. He's a good eater, said Papa. Speaking of eating, said Dot, he's going to eat us all up. But Mama and Papa were too busy taking pictures to listen. Mama and Papa seem to trust him. Maybe Dot should give him a chance. Oh, he does look cute, doesn't he? Dot's friends came by to see the new baby. Shh, he's sleeping, whispered Mama. He's a good sleeper, whispered Papa. He's gonna eat us all up, they screamed. No kidding, said Dot. Let's play at your house. Well, Dot and all her friends seem to be worried, but Mama and Papa don't. Oh, uh-oh. For the first time, Wolfie cried. But Dot was too far away to hear him. Oh, oh, Wolfie's sad. And look, he's got a little bunny. I think that... It's his little bunny of Dot, his big sister, that he probably really loves. Aw, poor Wolfie. When Dot returned, Wolfie was waiting. Everywhere Dot went, Wolfie went too. Uh-oh. He's drooling on me, said Dot. He's a good drooler, said Papa. Well, Papa's very proud of Wolfie, hmm? The days passed, and Wolfie grew. So did his appetite. When Mama opened the cupboard, she got a surprise. The carrots, said Mama. They're gone. Oh, no, said Papa. He ate them all up, said Dot. Oh, my. She does look angry. Dot fetched the carrot bag, but she did not get far. Oh, yeah. Looks like Wolfie wants to go with her, huh? He wants to help, said Mama. He's a good helper, said Papa. He's going to... Ugh. Skip it, said Dot. I've got my eye on you, Buster. Oh, she's, she's still so suspicious of him, but he's always been nice, hasn't he? He's just hungry. Wolfie and Dot went to the carrot patch. Looks like a market, right? Carrot patch co-op, it says. That's a nice fella right there, cleaning up. I believe he's a uh, sloth, maybe? I'm not sure. Dot was picking out the last carrot when Wolfie's mouth opened wide. I knew it, cried Dot. On guard! Oh, she looks like she's ready to fight him with that carrot. But wait, what's Wolfie pointing to? But Wolfie wasn't looking at Dot. <gasps> oh, my. Friends, his shirt says yummy bunny. Those are honey bears. I think it's a bear. And I think that bunny looks like a delicious snack to him. <gasps> Wolfie is trying to warn her. Dinner, roared the bear. And it was Dot's chance to run away. Instead, she ran forward. <gasps> the bear picked up Wolfie. Let him go, Dot demanded. Or, or, I'll eat you all up. Dot 
Dots are burning. How's she gonna eat a bear? The bear blinked. You're a bunny, he said. I'm a hungry bunny, said Dot. But I'm bigger than you, said the bear. I'll start on your toes, said Dot. She's kind of a scary bunny. Help, cried the bear. She's going to eat me all up. <laughs> Looks like Dot scared him away. Nice job, Dot. Dot relaxed as the bear ran away. Whew, we're safe, she said. That's when Wolfie pounced. <gasps> oh, he pounced with a hug. Oh, look. They're hugging. Come on, little brother. Let's go home and eat. Aw, didn't we like this story? I love that one. See, at the beginning, Dot is very distrustful of the new baby wolf, but then she comes around. Who's ready for a song? I'm ready for a song. I'm really excited for singing today. All right, let's see here. Hmm, what should, we're gonna start with my favorite song. We're gonna start with my favorite song because I love it so much. Are you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp them! If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo! Peekaboo! Then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo! Wiggle your ears. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your ears. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your ears. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Hooray! Then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Oh, great singing, friends. Really good job. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that song as much as I do. All right, let's see here. I've got three more stories to share, and I think the next one I'm going to share is going to be this one. This one is a new favorite of mine. I just heard it for the very first time ever this summer. In uh, summer reading program, we had some guests who came to visit with us, and they were the jugglers. Do you guys remember the jugglers? Um, Jay and Leslie, they were really, really fun. And they read Interstellar Cinderella, and I told Miss Linda, Oh, Miss Linda, they read the greatest picture book. We've got to get it for the library. And she did. So here we have it, Interstellar Cinderella by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by Meg Hunt. So I hope you guys enjoy as much as I did. Excuse me. I love when I get to hear a new story that is shared by someone else um, because that makes it really fun and exciting for me. Okay, Interstellar Cinderella. She looks like she's a builder, doesn't she? I think she is. Once upon a planetoid, amid her tools and sprockets, a girl named Cinderella dreamed of fixing fancy rockets. Oh, neat. She 
she fixed the robot dishwashers and Zoom brooms in her care. But late each night, she snuck away to study ship repair. One day, her wicked stepsisters came dashing in, excited. The Princess Royal Space Parade, our family's invited. I wish that you could come, my dear. Alas, no room, although. Why don't you fix that broken ship and fly it to the show? Toolbox, Cinderella cried. We're stranded here, I guess. But Murgatroyd the mouse sent out a cosmic SOS. I'm here, your fairy god robot. I'll make you brand new tools. You'll need a spacesuit too, of course. Atomic blue with jewels. This power gem will speed your ship across the starry sky. It only lasts till midnight. After that, your ship won't fly. Oh, thank you, Cinderella said. She quickly fixed the rocket, then tucked the sonic socket wrench inside her spacesuit pocket. She zoomed past stars and nebula and parked beside a moon. The space parade was glorious. Each spaceship made her swoon. At last, the royal ship approached. Her heart was filled with yearning. The ship of Cinderella's dreams. But heavens, what was burning? Oh no. I think that ship needs some repair. The princess spaceship jerked and hissed and spewed a cloud of grit. The prince hopped out. Oh, blast! What now? My chief mechanic quit! But interstellar Cinderella knew just what to do. She zip-zapped with her socket wrench. The ship was good as new. The prince invited her aboard. Last stop, Galactic Hall. He said, I hope you'll join me for the gravity-free ball. They talked for hours of rocket ships. The time went whizzing by. Then Cinderella saw the clock and said, I have to fly. But wait, the prince called after her. Please tell me how to find. The girl was gone, but she had left her socket wrench behind. Oh no, it's a valuable tool. The prince sent a transmission to the farthest edge of space. I'll search the cosmos for her. How I wish I'd seen her face. The prince's ship, Grisella screeched. Her sister squealed in fear. The prince won't marry one of us if Cinderella's here. Their mother said, don't worry, he won't find her in this house. I've trapped her in the attic with that useless robot mouse. Oh, she's not very nice. The prince's cargo door revealed a broken craft within. The girl I seek can fix a ship. So, who'd like to begin? Ooh, not everybody can fix a rocket ship. He gave the sonic socket wrench to one and then the other. Alas, they couldn't fix the ship, and neither could their mother. Uh-oh. Cinderella struggled, but the space rope held her tight, till Murgatroyd's robotic teeth cut through it with one bite. The ship, it's leaving! Wait, what's this? She made a fast repair, then strapped the rusty jetpack on and blasted through the air. She landed right beside the prince. That wrench is mine, she cried. She quickly fixed the ailing ship. The prince said, be my bride. 
She thought this over carefully. Her family watched in panic. I'm far too young for marriage, but I'll be your chief mechanic. Amid her fleet of sparkling ships and friends both old and new, a joyful Cinderella cried, My stars, dreams do come true. Did you guys like that story? I love that story. It's one of my favorites. I like stories that are like old stories, but they have kind of a new twist on them. So next up, I'm going to read one of my favorite, 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 favorite ever stories. Probably my all-time favorite story. The Pout Pout Fish. Now friends, if you don't know the story of the Pout Pout Fish, and some of our grown-ups might not know, the Pout Pout Fish is a story that's been one of my favorites since my kids were little. I bought it at a book, for, a book fair, a scholastic book fair, at our local elementary school, Lucy Wortham James Elementary, and I brought it home, and I have been sharing it with, with my friends ever since. So the best thing about the Pout Pout Fish is that the way I read it, it is most definitely a story to read along. So, friends, if you're at home watching, make sure that you teach your grown-ups how to read along. And for those who haven't heard before, there's a very special part of the story right here. I'll show you the picture. And when it gets to this part, I'm going to trust that everybody at home is reading along with me because we really have to get it. Blub. 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 Okay, guys. So now you know how to read along when we get to my favorite part of the story. Are you ready to hear the Pout Pout Fish? Oh, I hope so. I love this. I'm trusting you guys are all going to be uh, blub blubbing with me. The Pout Pout Fish is written by Deborah Deason and illustrated by Dan Hanna. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub! Blub! Blub. That was good, guys. I know you did a good job. Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend, Nice thought, Ms. Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub. 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 Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl, says the fish to his friend. Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face. 
So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blurb. 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 <laughs> I love this story. Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squiggly sight. She's squirmy, she is squelchy, she's slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside by tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hulky bulky sulking is an unattractive trait, says the fish to his friend. Mr. Ape, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be glum. I'm a pow pow fish with a pow pow face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Now, along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, she plants a kiss upon his pout, and then she swims away. <gasps> Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue. Then he blinks and speaks at last. My friends, says Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. Cherry cherries all over the place. So I yell, smooch, 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 smooch. They're smooching. <laughs> My favorite story. And do you know why I love reading that one so much? Um, especially when I read to my um, elementary friends. They all go, oh, gross, kissing. And I laugh and laugh because it makes me laugh. I think that's so funny. Oh, I hope you guys liked that reading of the Pout Pout Fish. It's one of my favorite stories ever. So I am gonna, we're gonna sing one song together and then we've got one more story. And since we sang the Pout Pout Fish and we got to see all those ocean creatures, I thought today would be a fun day to sing five green and speckled frogs. Okay, can you guys show me your five? <laughs> 
Show me five. There you go. All right, and we're going to count them down. Here's my log. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are four. Good job. Four green speckled frogs. Gub, gub. How many? Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are three green speckled frogs. Gub, gub. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two. Good job. Great counting. Two green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. How many are left? <gasps> Just one. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are no green speckled frogs. They're all in the pool. They're having a good time swimming, aren't they? I love that song. It's one of my favorites. Of course, singing always makes me feel a little bit thirsty. And I do enjoy my story time coffee, as all of my story time friends know. Okay, guys, last story of the day is a really funny story about what kind of pet? A unicorn. Have you ever had a unicorn for a pet? I've never had one. I hear they don't make great pets. Now, I mean, I could be wrong. Please, if you've had a unicorn for a pet, definitely let me know. Tell me what your experiences were like. But if you haven't, you might consider reading this story before getting one. Because this story is called, You Don't Want a Unicorn. It's written by Amy Dykeman and illustrated by Liz Clemo. She's a great illustrator, one of my favorites. I follow her on Instagram and she shares fun little cartoons all the time. You don't want a unicorn. Oh, okay, well this looks like a pet park, right? Yes. And there's a friend over here. He's wearing a shirt that says, I love unicorn. He's carrying a little stuffed unicorn. Okay. It looks like everyone else has more ordinary pets. We got a puppy. And we have a mouse. Looks like a mouse. Stuffed mouse, maybe. Let's see. Oh, that was a dragon. What is that? It's a wishing well. You were going to wish for a unicorn, weren't you? Wishing for a unicorn is a big mistake. Just step away and... Uh-oh. Things are about to get... <gasps> Ugly. Trust me. His wish came true! It's a unicorn! Oh, it is very beautiful, isn't it? And the rainbows, ooh, it's so nice. He looks very happy. Sure, having a unicorn seems fun at first. All right, super fun. Fine, it's awesome, okay? Oh, that is pretty awesome flying a unicorn with a trail of rainbow behind you. Okay. I'm waiting for it, 
for this book to tell me why having a unicorn is bad because it looks pretty great so far. But it's not worth it. What you don't know is the unicorns shed. Oh, like dogs or cats, they shed hair, but it looks like this unicorn is shedding glitter. Eek. And scratch. <gasps> Uh-oh. He stuck his horn right through the pillow. He wrecked the couch. And no matter how hard you try, unicorns can't be house trained. You don't want that. Trust me. Oh, gross. Ew. Don't even get me started on the jumping. Oh no, this unicorn's wrecking everything. The chewing. And the burping. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, this unicorn has terrible manners. Hey, not bad. You could probably pull this off. If it wasn't for the biggest, top secret, nobody knows about it problem with having a unicorn. Unicorns live in groups. And when a unicorn gets lonely, <gasps> no! Right when you're thinking this could be double super fun, poof, there's another, poof, and another, poof, and another. Great. You've unleashed the most destructive force in the universe. A unicorn party. Oh, snap. Oh, my goodness. Those unicorns are trashing everything. They drew on the walls and they made holes in the ceiling. And they made messes all over the floor. Oh, no. Oh, my. What will you do now? I told you. Why didn't you trust me? Quick, grab your piggy bank. Run. You have to wish them away. It's the only solution. Pip, 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 pip. Poof, 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 poof. <sighs> okay. Whew. Four unicorns down. Yep. That one needs to go back too. It is for the best. Trust me. Plip. Poof. Aw. Cheer up. You could get a goldfish or a nice rock or... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You don't want one of those either. Trap, flip. Oh, poof. Oh, no. A dragon. Ah! <laughs> did you guys like that story? Oh, I hope you did. I hope you enjoyed our stories today. I had such a fun time reading with you. I was so glad to get to read some of my favorite stories. And I'm so happy that you guys were able to share them with me today. I think it's about time for some of you to maybe eat some lunch, do a craft, maybe take a little nap. I might take a little nap today. Feels like a good day for napping. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Tomorrow night, Thursday at 645 I'll be doing some bedtime stories, so I hope you guys can join me, and then I'll see you again on Monday night. 
Have a great day, guys. Thanks for joining me.